In the early 1980s, Ayrton Senna was viewed as a generational talent by many Formula One teams. At the age of seven, he learned how to drive his family's Jeep around their farm. By the age of 13, he was beginning his karting career. He won the South American Kart Championship in 1977, and from 1978 to 1982, he contested for the Karting World Championship. And also in 1982, he went on to win the British and European Formula Ford 2000 championships. After winning the British Formula 3 championship in 1983, he tested for Williams, McLaren, Brabham, and Tolman. Since McLaren and Williams didn't have any available seats at the time, his rookie season would be spent driving for Tolman Motorsport. Despite DNQing at Imola, back-to-back -back six place finishes was the high mark entering his fifth career start at Monaco, which would turn out to be his coming out party. In wet conditions, he worked his way through the field, passing the championship contending teams. This daring pass on Nicky Lauda took place on the most dangerous part of the racetrack, closing in on leader Alain Pross by three seconds a lap. Unfortunately, the race would end early, but since Alain didn't cross the line first, Senna thought he had won. But still, he scored his first career podium and went on to score two more with Tolman before moving on to Lotus in 1985. This team won race and championships, so without question, Senna's move was viewed as a massive upgrade. In just his second start with the team, he scored his first career victory in the Grand Prix of Portugal. He would drive for Team Lotus from 85 to 87, scoring a total of 6 victories, along with 22 podiums and 16 poles. Watching Senna qualify took everyone's breath away. In Formula 1, you did not want to be the driver to ruin Senna's fast lap. Senna went on to finish top five in points in those three seasons, but the team wasn't quite good enough to win a championship. During the 87 season, Lotus was powered by Honda, and through that relationship and the approval of Alain Prost, Senna had joined the McLaren team for 1988. You had the established champion and the young upstart. With all the pieces in place, McLaren was set to dominate for the next few seasons. With such a dominant car and driver combo, it would be more of a challenge racing against each other rather than the rest of the competition. After leading by 55 seconds at Monaco, Senna would crash out early because of driver error. Even though it was early in the season, in a way, this snapped him back into focus. Refusing to be labeled the number two driver, Senna went on to win eight races, score 11 podiums, as well as 13 poles, scoring his first World Drivers' Championship in 1988. Entering 1989, McLaren had a problem. What happens when you have two world championship drivers on the same team? You begin to have friction. The relationship had completely soured, and it would be shown on full display in the 1989 Japanese Grand Prix. Senna and Prost made contact. Alon wasn't able to finish, but Senna kept going. While Prost went to the steward's office, Senna won the Japanese Grand Prix. Or so we thought. Senna was disqualified for receiving a push start, cutting the chicane after the collision, and for crossing into the pit lane entry, which was not part of the track. Because of this, Alon clinched the championship and publicly stated he couldn't wait to leave McLaren because it was impossible to work with Senna. Senna stated he felt he was treated like a criminal. But 1990 would be a fresh start, as this time there was no question that Senna was the team's number one driver. For the third season in a row, the Japanese Grand Prix would be the championship decider. Now driving for Ferrari, if Alon didn't finish the race, Senna would clinch the championship. Despite winning the pole, Senna would start on the dirty part of the track, giving Alon more grip to take the lead on the start. For the second season in a row, Prost and Senna would make contact, this time at the start of the race, and would both DNF. The race wouldn't restart. Ayrton Senna had had just won his second World Drivers' Championship. Prost stated he wanted to run over and punch Senna in the face, but was so disgusted that he couldn't do it. Former world champion Jackie Stewart had questioned Senna on his recent accidents, leading to one of the most recognizable quotes in all of motorsport. He showed absolutely no contrition. When there is a gap, you either commit yourself as a professional racing driver that is designed to win races 
or you come second, or you come third, or you come fifth. And I'm not designed to come third, fourth, or fifth. I race to win. And if you no longer go for a gap that exists, you no longer race a gap. Senna was going for his third world title in 1991, but along the way, he needed to cross a win off the list. Out of all of his wins, arguably the most memorable was him finally winning his home Grand Prix. The gearbox had jammed and was stuck in sixth gear, but Senna wanted to win this race so freaking bad and decided to tough it out for seven laps. <laughs> Senna needed help getting out of his car and getting up to the podium, but once he was finally up there, he was embraced by the Brazilian public. The 1991 season is arguably his best, winning 7 races, 12 podiums, and 8 poles along with a 3.4 average finish the best of his career. The championship would come down to either him or Williams' Nigel Mansell. On lap 9 of the Japanese Grand Prix, Mansell attempted to overtake, but spun out into the gravel. He was unable to finish. Senna had won his third World Drivers' Championship in four years, becoming the youngest driver to do so. With this amazing four-year span, it felt like nothing could stop them, until somebody did. Senna's determination to win manifested itself in dismay at McLaren's inability to challenge Williams. Nigel Mansell won the 1992 World Championship, while Senna finished fourth in points, his lowest since 1986. Senna expressed interest in joining Williams, but when Alon Prost decided to come back from a sabbatical, he signed with Williams for the 93 season after taking the entire 92 season off after getting let go early by Ferrari in 91. One of the agreements he had in the contract was making sure Ayrton Senna wasn't a teammate. It's impossible to accept somebody to come to a team February in the year with the signed contract, Vito, myself and himself too, and eventually they change his side but stay with the Vito and myself. And I think if Prost is, wants to be called the sole champ and three times world champ and come back in a sportive way, maybe win another championship, he should be sportive. The way he's doing, he's behaving like a coward. It's like if you go in a 100 meter sprint yeah. and you, you want to have running shoes and everybody else have, should have Led shoot. That's the way he wants to race. This is no racing. And this is bad to all of us. 1993 would turn out to be his last season with McLaren, but he went out with a bang. In the European Grand Prix, he went from fourth to first in just a single lap, in a McLaren that wasn't the best, and also in wet conditions. Formula 1 fans call this Ayrton Senna's Lap of the Gods. Senna won five races in 1993, which included another Brazilian GP, European GP, and the famous Monaco GP. But Prost walked away with the championship and after the season decided to retire, leaving a seat open for Ayrton Senna in 1994. Ayrton Senna won the season finale's Australian Grand Prix and it would turn out to be not only his last win for McLaren, but the last win and podium of his career. After all the hard fought battles, Prost and Senna would sit on the podium for one last time. Funny side note that gets lost in history, just before the season's finale, Senna punched Eddie Irvine in the face after he wouldn't get out of the way. 1994 was supposed to be the beginning of a new era. After all of those seasons driving for the McLaren team, Senna would move on to Williams. While they had the pace to compete for a championship, the car had a ton of other issues. Senna wasn't fully comfortable with the car and team yet. But then again, we're only two races in. After two DNFs to open up the season, the third race was gonna make or break them. The San Moreno Grand Prix was supposed to be like any other, but as we know now, it turned out to be the most tragic weekend in Formula 1 history. During practice, fellow Brazilian Rubens Barrichello lost control and had a massive accident. He was okay, but still, the accident was extremely scary. On Saturday, Senna performed as he usually does in qualifying, 
putting it on pole for the third straight race. But it didn't matter anymore, because during qualifying, Roland Ratzenberger, who was making only his second Formula 1 start, would tragically pass away in a crash. He was 33 years old. Afterwards, Senna had talked with the head doctor, Sid Watkins, when Sid made a suggestion. Since they both liked fishing, he suggested that, why don't you quit and I'll quit and we can go fishing. Senna told him, I can't quit. Unfortunately, on May 1st, 1994, tragedy would strike. If the weekend wasn't horrible enough, the start of the race didn't make it any better. The race eventually resumed, and Senna was looking like the early favorite. Senna and Williams can get their season back on track with a victory. Once Sid Watkins got to him, he raised his eyelids and it was clear from his pupils that he had a massive brain injury. He lifted him from the cockpit and laid him on the ground. As he did, Senna had sighed, and although Sid wasn't religious, he had felt his spirit had departed at that moment. The former world motor racing champion Ayrton Senna has been pronounced clinically dead after a crash at this afternoon's San Marino Grand Prix. Senna suffered serious head injuries when his car left the track and crashed into a concrete wall. The official report concluded that a combination of factors, including the design of the steering column and the suspension system, as well as the characteristics of the track, contributed to the accident. But even though that's on the FIA's official report, the cause of the accident is still debated to this day. The entire country of Brazil was in a state of mourning. Senna not only represented the country in Formula 1, but did so much for the people that they wanted to pay their respects. Thousands of people crowded the streets of Brazil to get a look at their hero one last time. Even though his career and life were cut way too short, Ayrton Senna is still considered the greatest driver in Formula 1 history. From his accomplishments, to his personality, to the controversies, as well as his generosity and ferocious style behind the wheel made him one of the most iconic figures in Formula 1 history. Even though Lewis Hamilton has the most wins, if you were to ask him who the greatest of all time was, without question, he would say Ayrton Senna. When asked which driver he got the most satisfaction from racing against, he didn't mention anyone in Formula 1, instead choosing to give props to his former karting teammate Terry Fulaton. For Senna, it was pure racing. No politics, no money involved. It was real racing, just as he liked it. Ayrton Senna was 34 years old. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.